Hello everyone, welcome back to The Printosaurus. I'm Aaron and today we are covering some upgrades that I've done over the last few years to my X1 Carbon. I uh, recently did a updated A1 Mini upgrades video and I realized I've never actually talked about my X1 Carbon. So today we're going to dive into what all I've done to it and I'm gonna share that stuff with you. So let's get to it. So out of the box, the X1 Carbon is a fantastic printer. It works extremely well. There's not much, if anything, that you really have to do to it. So over the last two years or so of playing around with this, I've actually uh, slowly upgraded it over time. And I wanna share those upgrades that I've done with you today. So starting out, uh, this one is very simple and it is something that I would recommend off the bat. And that is your filament uh, poop chute. And the reason why is because in most cases you're buying this with an AMS unit and when you do that, you're going to have purge waste. Uh, what does that mean? Well, when you print and it changes colors, it needs to bleed out the existing filament so that those colors don't uh, cause issues when it transfers to the other color and you have discoloration and you don't get the result that you want. So it has to purge that filament enough so that the new color loaded can print cleanly. And what does the X1 Carbon do? Well, it dumps it out the back of the printer. There's nothing there to catch it. Um, so this is a very, very simple print. Um, what I like about this simple design is it has two magnets that are incorporated. And what that does is it allows you to just stick it to the back and it stays in place. It doesn't move around. And you can see here, that is just from a very, very small print. So it is very easy for waste to accumulate. This does an excellent job in terms of volume as well uh, with holding a couple of prints worth of waste. Now links to all of these will be down below in the description. At some point in time when you're printing, uh, you're going to experience your purge waste uh, making its way back onto the print bed uh, on the print surface when you're doing a print. And sometimes that can cause a print to stop. Uh, it could be in the way when your printer is trying to finish a print and cause all kinds of issues there. Well, this little guy here is a clip. It's a purge chute extender that clips on the very top of the purge chute. And it helps mitigate uh, the possibility of having that filament make its way back onto your print bed surface. A very simple mod, simple print, and uh, it's just a nice insurance policy to keep the inside of your printer free of debris. So over time with your printer, you're going to accumulate some dust and wear and tear. Um, you're gonna get some debris from your belts wearing. Uh, pretty much anything can make its way into your printer. And you have some elements that are exposed. You have the top of the bearing races exposed for the front two screws. And then in the middle back is your third screw. And uh, that is what allows your Z axis to move up and down. Well, there is a simple print that you can do uh, to cover those areas. So these uh, two that I have here, uh, simply snap in the front of the printer to cover the main bearings there. And then this guy here, the longer piece, uh, presses in place in the rear to protect the tops of the screw in the back. And these are just little insurance policies. Um, I put these on much later, uh, probably about a thousand hours into printing uh, with my X1 Carbon. So my X1 Carbon came with the engineering plate and uh, the high temperature uh, on the other side. And this plate works pretty well for most uh, filament types. You have to use a glue stick in some cases, you have to use uh, the glue roller. And you know, that's not always ideal. So a very simple upgrade that you can do off the start with your X1 Carbon is you can go and pick up a PEI build plate. And this thing really works. Uh, it's one of the workhorses in my sh uh, studio space. I have one for every printer. Uh, things stick to it extremely well. I don't have many issues with adhesion and it's just a very good universal build plate. Now, if you wanna take it a step further, there is new technology out now, uh, and that is the CryoGrip Pro, uh, which is a video that I covered recently on their Frostbite and Glacier build plates. They work extremely well with the X1 Carbon, the A1, A1 Mini, and P series printers. And this is, I would say, a step up in terms of adhesion. Another great thing about this particular build plate is it takes less heat. 
Um, and what I mean by that is your bed temps don't have to be as high to successfully uh, have something adhere to this build plate. So you save a little bit of energy there and that allows you to maybe not have to vent uh, your X1 carbon if you're printing in an enclosure. Uh, some filaments, PLA being one, uh, typically does not like to be in an enclosure. So by reducing some of those temperatures, it just increases the likelihood that you're going to have a great print with good overhangs and things like that, where your temperature typically affects those areas. So very small upgrade um, for a very capable printer. Now on to your AMS unit. In most cases, you probably bought the X1 carbon combo, which comes with an AMS. And what I have here is the internal piece to your AMS unit. So in the back here, you have uh, your spots where uh, the desitent uh, bags uh, that bamboo gives you sit. And those work okay, but uh, they kind of wear out fast. They're not reusable and uh, you have to replace them. And obviously that costs money. So there are options and there are tons of options out there. So I'll list my favorites, but there, I mean, you can kind of take your pick there, but you can print containers that sit here in the back that allow you to buy desitent beads and those you can reuse. And how do you reuse them? Well, you can take those beads and you can microwave them. You can put them in a container inside your printer and let the bed temperature and your chamber temperature dry them out. You can put them in an oven. Uh, there's a number of videos on how to handle those as well to dry them back out so that you can reuse them. So I recommend at a minimum replacing the rear sections with those. That way you don't have to spend extra money there to uh, keep your humidity levels down in your AMS unit. If you wanna take it a step further, you can get things like this. So these are cases for desitent that sit in the front of the printer here. And again, there are a number of options available um, that, uh, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of design. All of them work uh, very similar. Basically, you fill them up with desitent and you place them in the front of the unit. Uh, there's customized options where you can have a humidity uh, display there on one of them if you want. Um, that shows you real-time humidity levels inside your AMS units. But that combination is a great thing to have to keep your filament dry uh, while you're printing. And uh, it just, it's something that works really well. So going to the extreme with the AMS unit, which is what I've done with mine, I'm running what's called the Python uh, mod, which is up here. But before I get into that, I'm gonna show you another mod that you could do, which is the Hydra or Hydra Pro. I have videos on these. If you'd like to take a look, they're listed here. This is a full internal replacement to your standard AMS unit. It still uses all the electronics, your feeder motors and everything, and the existing case of your AMS unit. And why would you maybe want to upgrade to this and why did I do it? Well, filament comes in a wide variety of spool types. There is no universal standard. So sometimes we get a, a spool that is too wide or too big or even too small if you're using a sample spool. So the Hydra offers you the ability to adjust these rollers here to fit different size filaments. In this case, I have one that is too wide, and then this one here is a sample spool, and you can see I have the wheel adjusted so it sits nicely there. And that allows you to use pretty much any filament type that you want. So that is the Hydra and the Hydra Pro, and what benefits it offers there. Now taking things a step further is a complete departure from the enclosure and a complete redesign in terms of how the AMS unit works. This is called the Hydra Pro. It is module based, so you have four modules here. If you wanted to, you could print four more if you have two AMS units and extend it out. It gets pretty long, but it is something you could do. Now this one is a gear driven system, so it does not utilize any of those rollers, which means when you have filaments uh, that are almost to the end of the roll, uh, you may have experienced that spool hopping around or having some retraction issues or feeding issues uh, because uh, the spool can't sit properly in the rollers, so it's no longer responding. The gear-driven system eliminates the possibility of that uh, by allowing you to screw on your filaments and lock it in place, and then it sits in these bearing races here, and everything works great. The other advantage to using this is you could also run your external spools through this by using a splitter of some sort um, down the line of your PTFE tubes before it hits the printer. Um, and it gives you the option to use this to load your filament. And then there's a second port here that you can put a PTFE tube in 
that allows you to run that second spool, which is fantastic. And in terms of size, you're not really limited here. It is uh, significantly more universal than your standard AMS and the Hydra, in my opinion. And there are also uh, newer mods coming out where you can use a 3 kg spool or 5 kg. And Hume Beam, the gentleman that is responsible for designing the Python and the Hydras, um, is constantly improving these. So you get the benefit of improvement over time with these systems as well. This one is a replacement to your knob that is on your glass top. Uh, in some cases, you may need to vent uh, your chamber and maybe you don't wanna open the door and you wanna vent the top glass. Well, this allows you to swing out this little handle and it locks in place and it allows you to vent your top glass. So I'll show you here. And it works really well. It's very simple. Uh, it uses the existing hardware. You unscrew, screw that in. And uh, it's just a very simple mod. Today's video is brought to you by PCBWay, pcbway.com. Jump online, take a look at their website. They have tons of options for 3D printing needs, uh, whatever you may need. ABS, PLA, PETG, they can print it. If you need a lot of it, they can print in bulk as well. Customer service is good, uh, quality is fantastic, and shipping is not that bad. Uh, just a reminder, Spring Festival for uh, PCB Way is coming up and uh, they will be closed January 27th through the 30th. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your ordering and things will be fulfilled as soon as they return. PCB Way, pcbway.com. Moving on to uh, another item on the inside of your printer, filter. Uh, one of the big things with the X1 Carbon is how well it prints with materials like ASA and ABS. And they are or can be uh, toxic. And those fumes, um, the stock chamber fan has a filter on it. It does okay, but it doesn't filter out everything. And those smells and everything make their way outside of your printer. Voxel has come up with a new filter. This is a HEPA filter. HEPA 13 and a carbon filter all built in the one. And it is a direct drop-in replacement for your printer. And this simply drops right in place and it eliminates 99.95% of those uh, toxic uh, nanoplastics and things that make their way out into the air. $5.99 for this, I think it's a great price as well for something that really takes care of all your fumes, smells, things like that. It is a great upgrade. Um, a complement to this, if you wanna take it a step further, you could do the bento box that uh, Voxel also sells. And that is an internal um, filtration unit that recycles the air within the chamber. Another upgrade that I did to the top area of the printer um, is a riser. And the riser does two things, at least I feel like it does. Uh, one of the things that the riser allows you to do is it gives you an opportunity to mount an LED strip on the inside, and then you can do a diffuser if you want to. Uh, there's tons and tons of designs. I went on the simple side of things because I didn't plan on incorporating my AMS on top of my unit because I wanted to be able to vent the glass and things like that. But you can find all kinds of different riser options. All of them are really nice. Most of them fit in place perfectly. Um, you know, there's a number of options there. So really kind of look at what you need and then figure out which one to print. But I do recommend one. The second reason why I recommend the riser is because your PTFE tube sometimes rubs on the top of your glass. You may have heard sounds of your top glass piece kind of hopping around and things like that. Um, the riser just adds a little extra clearance and it makes it uh, so it doesn't rub as often or at all in most cases. So it's just a nice touch there. And as I mentioned, there's an inside lip here. Uh, so this particular one that I will have the link down below in accepts eight millimeter and 10 millimeter LEDs. So if you do have your LEDs, um, and I'll do a video on this separately uh, because there are tons of LED options as well to choose from. But simply, you know, you can stick this on the inside here uh, and run it all the way around. And then on the back here is a port where you can feed your USB or power cable through uh, and then solder on or clip on your uh, connection there on the inside to finish up how you are routing your cables and everything. And it simply sits on top. 
sits in place nicely. There's a lip on here as well, so it does secure your glass cover. And the one that I use also does not interfere at all with using that vent clip uh, handle combination there in the front. Everything sits nice in place. You don't have to worry about it falling out because there is a lip all the way around. So everything stays nice and secure. So the last one that I have here as I lower my table is uh, where the extruder is. The PTFE tube makes its way into uh, the top of your print head and sometimes you have retraction issues. Uh, early on uh, with the X1 Carbon, um, that was something you would see more of and they actually recommended uh, you print um, a device that basically uh, keeps the angle of the PTFE tube at a certain angle and it allows a better routing into the print head into your extruder. So I found a lower profile version of that that works really well, clips in place and the PTFE tube runs through it. Uh, so it's just a very minor upgrade, but it does lead to uh, less issues with retraction and feeding uh, into the extruder. And it's a nice insurance policy to just have uh, instead of not having anything there to support it. So drop a comment down below, like, subscribe. Um, if you like these upgrades or maybe you have a suggestion to one that you favor, uh, let me know what it is. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, appreciate everyone's support and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.